What is up everyone and welcome to tonight's dev vlog. So I'm probably going to split this up into two parts because I got a lot to talk about. Um, so for part one, so I just released gear modding. It's in full swing. You can change your gear. Other players can see it. Um, the grills are customizable now. The actual skin of the truck. Tail flaps. So the next evolution of this is custom lids. So the way this is going to work is there is a UV map available and this entire lid is on that UV map. The shield, sides, the helmet itself, um, all of this is on one map. One for each helmet obviously. So talk about these and we'll get into this guy in a minute or two. So other players will be able to see it, you'll be able to update it. Um, it'll be the same system as available now. Um, you're able to choose your colors of your borks. You want to draw tets. You want to put stickers on it. It'll all show up for other players. Shields fully customizable, and the UV map is fully available for it. Um, this helmet actually right here is on a of it again. So this would be the new standard helmet. In. Um, so next up we got a European helmet same thing everything you see on this helmet mapped you want your stripes which I understand I heard they're kind of not supposed to be diagonal but from the US don't know um, your stripes you can have however you want you can straight left right upside down X's smiley faces whatever you want um, and then the same thing with this helmet uh, the shield Little square things are spaced out. Perfect to put whatever lettering you want and the helmet. Um, you're also able to put stuff here as well. Um, all the inside stuff like this is kind of stacked, so it's just you'll you'll be able to change the color of it, but you're not gonna be able to put any legible text on it. Um so we'll talk about this guy. So I'll be having a new content pack coming out within the next um probably month or so. It comes with the Boston device on the shield. Um, this is a really bad shield uh, I made in Photoshop. Well, Paint 3D. So this isn't what your end shield's gonna look like. It's a little blurry and everything. But obviously you can have them nice and crisp like this if you, if I was better at it. Uh, I'm not a texture. I just make games. I guess. Um, but yeah, you can have your little Boston device on there and you can put same thing, whatever you want. Pictures. Names, numbers, and everybody in the whole world can see. Um, so, talking about this guy. You may see him out on the streets a lot more. Um, about 95% finished. I gotta update some lights on it. It has some of the old lights still on it. Uh, shadow issues, as you can see. Um, but for the most part, it does work right now. Um, this is Tower Ladder 6. Outriggers come out, bucket fully works. Um, I don't think you can climb the stick yet unless you get in the bucket and teleport down, but the stick will be climbable. Okay. Try and climb it. Uh, it has the auto stow, it has an intake off the rear, one discharge on the pump side. And an intake and two discharges on your passenger side. Um, all the details aren't on it yet, like the miscellaneous equipment and stuff. So expect to see more stuff to it. Um, I do kind of plan on bringing scene lights to all the trucks at some point. So this would be able to be used. Um, but that might still be a little bit of a ways out. Uh, Lengthwise, uh, it might be slightly taller than the current next up highest aerial, but not by much or if by any. Um, has one deluge, master stream. I'm going to be making some of these amber lights kind of work. Come on, maybe blink. That would be pretty cool. Um, but. It takes care of that guy. Um, in the same pack as that, when that comes, it is a new squad.
I'll also be updating the in-game rescue for free. So rescue one is currently an eyesore to me. So I'm going to be putting this cab on its body. Could make it look a lot better. In other news, as of last update, controller support works 99% and will be up to 100% tonight with all in-game controls. So uh, I completely redid the control menu. Um, sense look sensitivity works. Anchor all the way up. Save exit. Go ballistic. Um, invert mouse controls work. I guess I should update that to say not just mouse, but um, I added new controls um, and labeled other ones better. So like scene light slash use foam, which this overlaps with the use tool button. Um, so, I used to use the use tool button for kind of like everything, but like it didn't really make sense for me to have like, for use tool, use foam, use scene light, so this would be used for all the rescues and stuff like that, and um, the airport truck. Um, Hydrant Auto Connect has been changed from just the drop tool button, drop hose button. Um, dump valve actually has a bind now. The tier tiller steering left and right has a bind now. A garage door opener instead of just using the flashlight button has a bind. And a lot of these are none for controller because I don't want to overlap too many things. And you may not even want all these things on your controller. So pick and choose what you want and they save just fine. Um... The helicopter stuff the menu will be reflecting that i plan on making a new ui for the trucks to reflect the controls um i know i played a game like construction sim where it kind of shows you the controls when you're there so i'm probably gonna have a toggle menu for that as well um so this separates the input from the graphics menu stuff but i think it's a good thing because i know people before kind of wanted to rebind some controls and just couldn't so um, if there's any other controls I come across, I'll keep adding them. Just to keep everything cool. Um, lots of updates to the map. Which I'll get into in part 2 of this devlog. Um, the last thing I'm probably going to touch on this devlog that I can remember off the top of my head is like... So... A lot of people are making truck skins with like numbers. So let's say you make like an FDNY skin and you want engine 132. I don't know if engine 132 exists, but hey, it's can count. Anything can happen. So a lot of these times they didn't match the end game station. So what I'm changing is in the role assignment board, it's not visible here yet, but it'll be right here. I do have it already kind of set up, um, which I can actually show you guys. Is you will be able to change your station number. So you can change it to any three digit number you want. Uh, and it will reflect on the side of the truck if you want it to. Otherwise, it'll reflect in the box numbers and on the side of the station or in front of the station. Visible. I'm gonna show you guys and how it's gonna set up. Cause um, so the one issue, the hurdle that I ran into, is that the actual mini map, which isn't on this my dev level, it doesn't allow you, or doesn't easily allow you to change widgets after, which is the little icons on the map, after the game's already running and kind of set up. So the way I'm getting around this is, you would pick your station. So as you can see, we got station two right here. Um, obviously, each rule board assigned to the station. So let's say we do 132. We hit update number, exit. Now we have station 132. Um, the way this is going to work for box alarms. So in here, this would have been the box. So this would be 132-1. I'm going to add dashes, but I'm going to have the original number on the back. So if this was 2, it would have been 2-132-the-box number. 
So, I mean, some states do do this. Um, Maryland, like PG County, for instance, um, they had an 8 before their station. So, like, um, instead of, like, Kentland being 33, they're actually 83. So, it would work the same way here. The original station number would be here. And it dash it, 132-1. Um, this will replicate, and hosts will be able to lock people out from doing this. So... All they have to do is turn on the truck deletion um, blocking that I already have in the game, whatever the, the setting's called, and random people won't be able to do this. Only the host can do this. Um, however, if the option isn't enabled, then everybody can update the ride inside. Make it whatever station they want. Um, this should help the skid community a lot. Um, with trucks responding and stuff, and now you know who's on scene and everything else. Um, I am going to be working on the one issue, like, the, um, in the emergencies, I have the, maybe I have to be in a truck. So, on emergencies, I'm going to have this actually um, work a little bit better. So, what's going to happen is, this will only appear, well, at least most of these options, will only appear if you're assigned, so like these two. Go to call. Once you hit a call and click responding, it'll say engine eight or two dash one thirty two is responding to, and then whatever the address is. Um, and then also as well, it'll say you click this, and it'll say two dash engine one. It won't say it, but text obviously. I don't have text to speech yet. Um, it'll say engine 2 132 is on scene at whatever. Um, I'm also going to add assignments up here too. Um, which, eh, this may be a, more of a my personal county thing of where we operate, but you'll be able to take first do engine, second do engine. So I'm going to have a little assignment thing for you to fill out. So it'll be optional. If there's nothing in the box, it'll just go on scene. But, like, if you click on scene and there's something in that box, you could, it could say, potentially, engine 2 132 is on scene, taking first do engine assignment or something like that, you know? Um, click available, it just says they put themselves available in quarters and stuff like that. I don't want to get too complicated, but a lot of it's for the RP community. Like, an average person probably doesn't even know this is here or care. It doesn't really affect anything. But um, I'm definitely going to be looking more into updating the CAD with more features and kind of figure out where everybody is. So that's something cool that I um, put some thought into. But um, I'm going to be adding more role-playing features as time goes on. And uh, part two of this devlog, which will come out probably, honestly, probably on New Year's Eve, I think, the next day I'm off. And I'll go over all the map changes and new stations and talk about some of the new DLC I plan on uh, bringing to the game, as well as just a more general direction, some other updates I've done and will do. Um, thank you for the support, the Patreon supporters, the original Kickstarter backers, the reason this is still possible. Um, the reason I can do these free updates for the trucks and just pay for models outright without getting any really kickback, but also to bring new trucks as well. So, thank you guys. Patreon links in the description if you want to help support the game. Um, plenty of more content coming down the pipeline. A lot of exciting stuff that I haven't even led on to yet. Um, and just as a final outro... Um, I had this skin, I paid out of my own pocket to have this skin updated, uh, as a lot of people requested it, so, took off one of the axles so it's no longer tandem, but it makes the truck look more uniform and like a normal quint, so, just an example, but anyway, you guys have happy holidays, happy new year, um, it's gonna be an amazing year for Into the Flames, I couldn't have been here without you guys, so, Thank you.